Joining us now on the War Horse Sportsbook Hotline is Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Sam, how are you this morning? Good. How are you guys doing? We are doing pretty well. Uh, just instant gut reactions after that Nebraska kind of uh, gut wrencher against Illinois last night. Oh, I mean, great, great effort, great play. Um, certainly, there's <clears throat> there's a review of that of that foul right before the end of regulation. Um, you know, one could argue that that Brad Underwood technical early in the game paid off late mm. uh, because you know that's that's probably not uh, a call uh, that you're going to make uh, that often uh, based on based on what happened. But uh, you know. Um, Illinois opened the door with only making one of the two free throws. It really would have felt unjust if he had made both of them and just won the game right there. Right. Uh, that did not happen. Uh, it went to overtime. And, you know, Nebraska wasn't able to make shots. And so, you know, I thought they played really well, they played really hard. I think I think Illinois is a very athletic and aggressive team, uh, talented. Uh, probably their, this might be Illinois' best chance to, to make a – significant run into the second weekend if they get the right draw they'll, they'll be a tough team to beat um, because they don't have to worry so much about throwing it into a seven foot center mm -hmm. uh, so they were challenging and and i thought nebraska played well now that now i mean look anybody would have said uh sunday was a hard win the, the biggest game of the year is wednesday um that's between two bubble teams everybody knows it it's on northwestern's floor you go win that game at northwestern you're you're going to make the NCAA tournament, and that's that's kind of what it is. And if they don't, you know, they're going to have to find another commensurate win somewhere along the way. But you go get that quad win one, and quad win one win, and um, you're you're going to be in really good shape for the NCAA tournament. People want to put this Nebraska team in. I think that's just reality. And uh, Wednesday's game is is absolutely huge, just huge. Sam, as we get further and further down the schedule, obviously these opportunities for road wins are getting fewer and fewer how much more of a magnifying glass i mean you said obviously at northwestern wednesday is the biggest game of the season but as those opportunities continue to uh dissipate how how much of a magnifying glass is it going to be on each nebraska away game to prove that you know kind of some of these earlier ones whether it's uh you know minnesota whether it's rutgers you know these ones that have slipped away on the road are not who they are away from PBA. Right. So, you know, they've got, I think they've got four road games left. Um, Indiana's got a wonky NET, but they're, they're a pretty good team. Mm -hmm. uh, then they have Ohio state and then, and then Michigan, which isn't a very good team. And is, it is just eight spots behind Indiana in the, in the, in the net range. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can beat Michigan and you can say you got your road win. Uh, right. That, that's one thing. But I think, I think the Northwestern one is just huge. You know, again, if they win that one, you know, I think they go to 17 and seven. And then, you know, you just look at the rest of the schedule. You, you, you can, you can close your eyes and see three more wins and left. Uh, you, I mean, you could actually look at that rest of that schedule and see seven wins. To be honest with you. It's mm -hmm. there. I mean, it's not a strong end of the schedule. Brass has got a chance. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you can if you lose the Northwestern, then you probably got to win four down the stretch, four of the last seven to get to twenty. If you beat Northwestern, you got to win three, and you know the schedule is very favorable. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll see what they do. They can win those three at home. Is my point. Let's say they win Northwestern, then they beat Michigan, they beat Penn State, they beat Minnesota. Well, they're twenty. There, there you go, and they still got Rutgers to go, and so um, they got a real chance here. To uh, Wednesday's game is just again, it's huge. It's a huge game, and and we'll see what they do. We're talking with Sam McEwen of the Omaha World Herald. Sam, how important do you think it was for KSA to get kind of back into a groove against Illinois, even though it didn't end up in a win? Very important. Um, you know, he he needs to see shots go down, and he was able to do that. I think Nebraska benefits from having two guys right now that are making shots, uh, KSA and Wilter, but. Casey's got to get the ball every game. And, and, and I think Nebraska got a little bit away from that against Wisconsin. He wasn't playing great, but, but Casey can get shots at the rim and he can get mid range shots. And there's a lot of different things he can do. 
Um, the one shot I wish he hadn't taken was, was, you know, they're up 36, 29 and he takes a 30, you know, 35 footer. That was unfortunate. Um, that's not the moment for that shot. Uh, the, the percentage of it going in is very low. Uh, that's a moment where you grind 30 to 45 seconds off the clock. And obviously I know the shot clock is shorter than that, but you, you kind of grind the clock and, and you, uh, you try to get the best shot possible and get that thing to 10. And then I think it just looks different. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think maybe Illinois uh, has has to take longer to come back in the second half. I mean, they, Illinois came out with the house on fire. So, um, you know, you really can't you can't let your guard down. Casey had a good game, though. He needed to have a good game. He can have another good game on, on, uh, on Wednesday. He can have a great game on Saturday. I mean, this is, you know, he tends to heat up as the season goes on, and this is his month. Mm-hmm. So he started it well. Sam, as you – kind of look at the way the Wisconsin game played out. You look at the way the Illinois game played out for Nebraska. Are you, what sticks out to you as kind of a factor in their ability to not get put away? There were a couple times, I mean, not a couple, there were a bunch of times against Wisconsin where it felt like one or two more shots, one or two more stops for Wisconsin. And that thing totally gets away from Nebraska felt like there were a couple times against Illinois where one or two more shots or one or two more stops and that thing gets away from Nebraska. Like, what do you yeah. think that is about this team that they seem to almost always make the play in that spot? They have depth. And, you know, as games wear on, teams may not have quite as much depth as Nebraska. So it helps that if a guy's not clicking, they can take him off the court and they can put somebody else out there and see and see what happens. And they got guys that aren't even playing. That uh, you know that could help them if they needed it. So I think that's part of it is just just the ability to bring a bunch of guys to a solution. You can put Sam Hoiberg out there, and he's going to get you a couple defensive stops. Um, you know that that's probably the key to it is is they've got waves. You know they've got waves of players who can who can do things for you. And then the other thing is you don't know which player is going to be hot from night to night. I mean Bryce Williams could have a night. Uh, Rick Mass didn't have his best game mm-hmm. Sunday, but but he made a couple of threes. You know, Casey had a, had a night. So like you, you you always you never quite always know who's going to be the person who steps forward and and makes those plays or makes that moment. And so I think Nebraska's depth helps them. I will say this: I I think Wisconsin's going to come a little bit back down to earth. Um, they're performing above what my preseason expectations would have been of Wisconsin. And, and I think they're going to come back down to earth a little bit. They miss, they missed some shots at Nebraska. They missed some shots against Purdue. I, I understand that they're playing two teams that they should beat handily this week in Michigan and Rutgers. It's not going to surprise me if they lose one of them. And, you know, so there's, there's some moments down the stretch of Wisconsin season where I'm going to be curious to see if they can kind of keep it on the track. That's a, that's a very nice team, but, you know, Again, I don't think there's much. I don't think there's much gap between Nebraska and Wisconsin. I really don't. Um, I think they're very similar teams. Uh, it's just that, uh, and let's just see where they're at at the end of the year. If Wisconsin is, I don't think Wisconsin's going to be at 25 wins at the end of the year. Let's put it that way. I think Nebraska could be at 20 or 21, mm-hmm. and I think Wisconsin could be at 21 or 22. And the only difference between those wins will be what they did in the non-conference. So Wisconsin, to its credit, tested itself in the non-conference. And, and won a few games in that in that realm, um, but let's just see. Let's just see what the what the records are at the end of the year. I think they'll be closer than people re- uh, imagine right now. Sam, is this Big Ten men's basketball tournament going to be one of the best in recent memory? It'll be tight. It'll be close. You know, I I, I think I think um, last year's was decent. You know, I, I don't know that you could say right now that anyone other than Purdue will win it. But um, what will be interesting about the tournament, Anna, is that there's going to be some teams that go there who either feel like they have to win at least one to make the NCAA tournament or, um, you know, they, they do. They do need to win one, you know, or they need to win two. Uh, they might even need to make a run. And so I think that's going to be interesting uh, to watch. There aren't – there's going to be teams right on the bubble there. I mean, Nebraska is going to be one of those teams that's on the bubble. I mean, I don't know what about Michigan State. I mean, you, mm. 
Michigan State's interesting, right? They have a good net ranking. They're, they haven't won a lot of games. You know, that's, that's a challenge for them. And they, have, they don't have the tiebreaker against Nebraska. You know, Nebraska's got some key tiebreakers along the way. They got one against Michigan State. They got one against Kansas State. Now, Kansas State's falling apart. But they have, you know, they have some wins that I don't know that Michigan State's going to be able to claim. And then at, and at that point, it's going to become something along the lines of, well, you know, Tom Izzo. No, that's not going to work. Um, Michigan State's going to have to finish strong. And they're going to have to put their resume out there like everybody else. So they're probably going to go to, to, to Minneapolis having a win one. Uh, we'll see with Northwestern, you know, that that's an, that's the other one to, to watch in the Nebraska. So there'll be some there'll be some really intense games at the uh, at the Big Ten tournament. Anna. Yeah, we're talking with Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Sam, you kind of got my my wheels turning about Wisconsin a little bit because, you know, when I when I saw that this, and this is not to take anything away from the Nebraska win, because that was a, obviously a phenomenal performance. But, I, you know, I saw that six next to their name. And I just look at that team and I'm like, that doesn't look like the sixth best team in the country. You know, is that is that one of those right. the they've kind of outperformed their level of talent at this point in the season? A little bit. You know, they're going to drop down to 13 or 14 or 15. Um, yeah. Which absolutely. feels more appropriate, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. I. This will be a big week. It's a hard week for them. You know, again, their schedule was was constructed oddly. Um, they have a ton of road games all in kind of a stretch there. I think they've got five in oh, 20 days. And so they just played, you know, Nebraska and lost. Now they go to Michigan and Rutgers. If they win those two, I think maybe you're, okay, they're, they're going to be a top 10 team. I don't think they're going to win a both. I think they're going to lose one of them. And then, at, you know, then down the stretch, I just think they're going to run into some tough games with, with hungry teams. You know, we, we don't I, – I wouldn't expect Iowa and Maryland to be – uh, NCAA tournament teams, but you never know. Maybe there's a way uh, to to you know catch up to them uh, and and put themselves in in the mix. Uh, so you know, yeah, I think I think Wisconsin's done a really nice job with the players they have. Um, I just don't, you know, and, and this is different for everybody. College basketball isn't as strong as it used to be, but I I don't think they're as good as North Carolina, and I don't think they're as good as Tennessee. And, and indeed, they lost to Tennessee earlier this year. So. Um, you know, there's, there's teams that I just think are probably going to end up being better than Wisconsin. Uh, we'll, we'll find out what happens. Felt that way about them two years ago when they were a three seed and lost to Iowa state in the second round and they didn't look like the better team when yeah. they played Iowa state. So, um, Wisconsin's a sum of their parts, greater sum than its parts. And, and that's a testament to what they do, but it also come into the tournament time. They, they, you know, they dip back down a little bit. So you're on the war horse sports book hotline. Um, if, Nebraska played Creighton in Lincoln tomorrow. What would the line be at this point in the season? Well, I mean, it, it, Nebraska might be favored. I can tell you that. I think Creighton will win the game. Mm. Uh, Creighton, Creighton's really energized playing at PBA. Um, I think that's that's evident. I mean, Creighton played an incredible game there. And they went to Seton Hall, and they played an incredible game at Seton Hall. The, the only game they did not play well is Connecticut. And I think that has more to do with Connecticut mm -hmm. and UNLV. They didn't play well that day either. Um, no, Creighton, Creighton is a road team. They, I think those guys like going and, you know, uh, punching, punching the, 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 the opponent crowd, you know, like, you know, uh, quieting them down. I don't mean literally punching them. But, <laughs> Just bone kisses. Like, right. I think they like doing that. I think at times for Creighton, it's kind of hard at home. Um, I think, you know, that crowd is, gotten to the point where they kind of expect Creighton to win mm -hmm. and they they get juiced when Connecticut's in town and um you know so I think I think we're Cray <laughs> Creighton thrives in road environments and uh you know so I think I think Creighton's just fine I it's unfortunate they lost uh to Butler again I think and I'm not trying to I think their crowd needs to show up for you know the whole game and and be you know be be a presence and then, you know, I think um, somebody on that bench is going to have to earn playing time. I, I really don't think it's that Greg McDermott doesn't want to play his bench. I think they've, they've struggled to earn, earn that. And we'll learn a lot this week. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned Creighton on the road. Well, they've got two games this week. First, one of them's against the hardest road environment in the league at Providence. I think everybody would say that's true. Mm -hmm. 
And then they go to Xavier, a team that they, Xavier matches up well with Creighton. Mm-hmm. They, they have for years, and it's going to be a hell of a battle. It'll be, you know, 93, 92. Um, so this is a week where if you want to say, okay, what, what's Creighton made of? You're going to find out this week. This is the week where you're going to learn a lot about who they are. And I think, I think what you're going to learn is they're pretty good, and I think they're going to win both games. But we'll see. We'll see. Sam, uh, staying on Creighton here for a minute, I've been having this debate with some people a little bit over the last couple of days. I thought a lot of what we saw on Friday against Butler was a lack of ability to adjust defensively to what Butler was doing, or at least of Butler's ability to take advantage of what Creighton wanted to give them. Do you think it was a more of a defensive issue for Creighton or you know, just Butler was on a heater? And there was not a lot you could do, or was it? Is there maybe a little bit of something in the middle there? Oh, both. And I think McDermott spoke to it on on Friday night. Uh, it's both. Yeah, I think they were probably they didn't play their best game uh, defensively. Uh, Butler did probably make some shots that you know Creighton wasn't expecting to make. He you know he gave Butler a lot of credit. Um, there were there were some moments in there, you know. And again, I think I think you have to every time you come out, you got to be ready. You know, if you're at home. You have to be ready to, to leverage the crowd, and the crowd has to be ready to leverage you. Mm-hmm. And I, there are just times when I think it takes them a little while to get going, and and the, the crowd. I mean, and you, they usually need a J run. A lot of times, when a team is as good as Creighton is, and it's so comfortable with playing the pace that Creighton play, they kind of figure that at some point during the game, the other, the opponent's going to get tired, and and they're just going to win. That's just as simple as that. And whether they win by five or they win by 11, everybody will say the game was close, but they'll win the game at the end. Um, and Creighton and Butler just won the game. Simple as that. I mean, that, that happens sometimes. I think Creighton will take its chances playing that pace with an opponent like Butler. The challenging games for Creighton, one of them is going to be Providence for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, because Providence is going to play a little bit different pace. But it's Connecticut, you know, and Villanova, the teams that will, will slow you down and will sort of take the air out of the ball and play physical um, and, and kind of drag, you know, drag the game along. And, you know, Villanova is a really challenging team for Creighton because they will play, they will drag everybody to their level. And, and so a lot of games are close. They're going to beat some teams that nobody expects them to beat. And then they're going to lose some games that they probably shouldn't lose. That's usually what happens to them. And, and Creighton's going to have to watch that one. That's going to be, that's going to be one that they've got to, you know, that they've got to be careful of because, um, you know, Villanova on the road, that's going to be tough. So, yeah, I mean, Providence is one to watch. Xavier's going to be a shootout. It always is. I think they'll win it. Um, it's going to be an interesting end of the year. If Creighton is in that three to six range, that's what you want to be in, that mm-hmm. three to six. You'll live even with a seven if the two is weak. What you want to stay out of is the eight, nine. Yeah. They're going to stay out of the eight, nine. They're going to be somewhere in the three, six range. Get to the second weekend, you know, play play a, a number one seed after they've been knocked around a little bit for an opening weekend. Um, I'm sure Creighton loves his chances right now uh, to get to the final four, but they probably could use one more player off that bench, whoever that is. I I, I don't know. They get some more consistency off the bench. Uh, I'm sure they'd be thrilled if they do that over the last month. Yeah, Sam, you mentioned that bench. Obviously the lack of production off the bench is a concern, but I think the bigger concern, at least for me, is the wear and tear on the starters. You look at that Butler game, you've got 40 full minutes out of Shireman, Ashworth, and Alexander. Then you get 38 out of Kalkbrenner. We saw the two-minute stretch from Fred King in the first half. It didn't go well. He was uh, on the milk carton after that. The only guy to get significant minutes off the bench was Farabello. We've seen Isaac Trout's minutes cut, and we really haven't seen anybody else get much of a shot off the bench there. I mean, at this point, I, I, are you more concerned about the wear and tear on the starters, or are you more concerned about the fact that outside of Farabello, I'm not even sure who the option on the, off the bench would be? Well, I think the, the wear and tear on starters is real, um, and I'm sure they'll find ways to to mitigate that in practice or in travel situations. This will be an interesting week because they're on the road. You know, travel takes something off of you. Uh, the Providence game is late. The Xavier game is early. And so what you're, you're really cutting a half a day off there. You know, if the, if the Xavier game was at eight o'clock at night, it's like, you know, 10 extra hours. 
So it's it's going to be a it's going to be a, a tight week, and they'll have to figure it out. As far as who comes off the bench, well, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be Trout. Um, they're going to play some games where his his presence is beneficial. Um, King's probably going to play more. I that's that's a story, and we we'll pursue that. Like yeah, Fred King has not played as much this year as mm-hmm. he is, that, as he did last year, and and you know some of that is because you know uh, Cole Sprinter hasn't didn't get mono for a month, but well yeah, but you know I mean I'm I'm surprised a little bit that it, it felt like King had a nice rookie year. And and he, um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't feel like he's played quite as well this year, and and that would be interesting. To his numbers haven't changed that much if you're looking at it for forty, but um, it looks like he, yeah, he doesn't play quite as much, and we'll we'll see what happens down the stretch. But you know, I mean, it was going to be a tight bench no matter what. That's just kind of how it was going to be. They're going to go eight deep. Jason Green was, you know, injured. Dotler's not ready. I'm a little surprised that Jonathan Lawson hasn't been more than he has been. Um, I think that's one thing that, you know, I'm sure they were hoping to to get more out of that. Uh, Lawson, the transfer from Memphis, and he hasn't done a ton. So, um, you know, I'm sure they'll get contributions where they can. I mean, m- I guess the point I'm making is it felt like they sort of willingly let Sharif Mitchell go. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like that would we, we, be would have been better off keeping him and, and not signing a couple other. Yeah, that might you know have fixed some other problems. Yeah, because that's a defender. That's a defender right there. Yeah. That's the guy that can come out and pull someone down. And so you know, I don't know. I mean, they'll 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 they'll, they'll assess it after the season. They got to know who they got coming back and who they don't. Um, they got an incredible recruiting class. We have a story this morning on Jackson McAndrew. He's He's an incredible player. Yep. Um, and he's going to be a great player at, at Creighton. So, you know, I mean, I think they'll figure it out. This We always knew this was going to be a tight bench. You want to keep this group together because you're not going to make a run to the Final Four with a 10 deep roster. It's it's the big three, plus Ashworth, who's really come on, and uh, and Mason Miller and Farabella, and that's, that's what it's going to be. Um, it helps with chemistry, and they have that. That's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Sam, we appreciate your time as always, and we will talk to you again next week. Have a great week. That is Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald on the War Horse Sportsbook Hotline. want to tell you real quick about our friends over at Dyer Law. If you've been hurt in a personal injury accident, you can count on the Dyer Law team to provide you with a helping hand when you need it, no matter what you're dealing with. Call the Dyer Law team at 402-393-7529 or visit Dyer.Law to chat with trusted professionals about your personal injury claim. That's D-Y-E-R dot law. Coming up next, we're going to get into, we're going to hand out some awards for Creighton and Nebraska men's basketball. It's Grammy season. Just had the Grammys last night. So we're going to get in some Grammy categories. I'll explain what that means. And we'll hand out some hardware, pretend hardware. I don't have actual trophies here. Uh, coming up next year on Red Sports Radio.